Why is everyone more jacked than you? Is it because everyone else is on steroids? Or is it because you have bad genetics and everyone else has great genetics? What the hell is going on? Why does everyone have a great physique except you? Look, if you've ever had these thoughts, I'll just tell you right now, this mindset is not serving you, okay? It's not helping you become the most jacked version of yourself. And I know this because I used to have these thoughts. Now I no longer do because of what I'm about to share with you in this video, okay? So why does it seem like everyone has a jacked physique except you? Well, to understand this, there's kind of like two parts to it. The first part is how our human brains work, okay? And the best way I can describe this is if you've ever been shopping for a new car. So think back to a time where you decided, oh, I'm gonna get this car. And suddenly when you're driving around, you're going about your day, you keep seeing this car everywhere. And it seems like there's now more of this car. You see it all the time. And is there more of that car now than there was before? No, it's just we now have, there's some sort of meaning that car has to us and, and our brains have a heightened perception towards that thing. So we see this car everywhere. It was always there before, but now it stands out. Now it means something in the noise full of cars, okay? And it's the same when you get into fitness, okay? Before you get into fitness and you see a guy with a great physique, he's just a guy with a great physique, okay? Yeah, cool, guy with a six pack, yeah, no big deal. You go about your day, right? But once you get into fitness and you start working on yourself and you start trying to build a good physique, you understand you know, how much time and energy and hard work and dedication it takes to be able to do that. So then when you see a guy with a great physique, that, that, that has more meaning to you now. He's like, oh, wow, that's impressive. A lot of, a lot of work has gone in uh, for that guy to look that way, right? So you will spend more time on those posts. And because you spend more time on those posts, maybe you even engage with those posts, the algorithm will serve you more of that content. And if I go onto my like Instagram discover page, 30% of it is men's physiques. <laughs> now it sounds gay, but it's not because the other 30% is like, uh, you know, hot chicks and like steak dinners or just ridiculously big cheat meals or whatever. That's pretty much Instagram for me, right? So because you now have a heightened perception towards men's physiques because you're now working on your fitness, you get shown more of that content. And because you get shown more of that content, you might spend more time on that content. And it's like a positive flywheel effect that you just keep seeing more and more and more men's physiques who these guys who look absolutely sick. But is that indicative of the average person? No, not even close, okay? Because you've got to think, when it comes to social media and fitness creators in particular, I'll put, a, I'll put a bell curve on screen to describe this, but a bell curve, when it comes to physiques, right, is you've got the majority of the people in the middle with an average physique. You've got some people on the left with kind of like a, just a terrible physique and some people on the right with an amazing physique, okay? And if we think about the people who create fitness content online, pretty much all of them will have an above average physique. Obviously, there's always exceptions to the rule, but most of the time, the people who are creating fitness content already have an above average physique. And then out of the creators who create fitness content, some of them won't even get noticed, okay? Only a smaller percentage of people even get noticed on social media. For example, I'm gonna make this video. This video might only get a thousand views, okay? Whereas someone else, a bigger creator can make a video like this and it will get a hundred thousand views or even a million views etc so it's not just like the people who get noticed on social media typically will have better physiques as well it's not usually the case with youtube youtube's a little bit more balanced but specifically with like instagram or short form or tiktok or whatever typically the guys with the best physiques are the guys that get noticed, not necessarily the guys with the best information. That's just a general rule of thumb anyway. So that's something to pay, pay attention to is your mind is now have a heightened perception towards men's physiques. 
and then you have algorithms serving you um you know more and more men's physiques of guys who are like literally the top one percent physiques in the world okay and it can mess with your perception and you can end up thinking everyone has a great physique except you when in reality that's far from the truth but what are these guys doing that we're not because i'm pretty sure you know if you're anything like me you would like to look like these guys or you would like to look as good as you possibly can do so what can we learn from them what are they doing that we're not doing that we can implement so we can look just stronger and better and more jacked right so there's a few things or at least the first thing to understand right is typically these guys will have been training for a very long time 10 years 15 years a long time now i don't know how long you have been training for but if you've been training for just one or two or three years and you're comparing yourself to someone who's been training for 15 years it's not really a fair comparison is it you know if you were any other sport and you were to compare someone who'd had two years of experience in that sport versus someone who had 15 years of experience in that sport you just you would never do it because it's not a fair comparison and that is the same thing with this like anyone who has got a top one percent physique they've been training for a very long time okay so don't compare your start to someone else's end or someone else's middle right that's the first thing second thing is genetics genetics play a massive factor in terms of your physique and how you look like huge and, and but the thing is we can't change genetics so we don't want to focus on this too much but genetics affect not only your starting physique, but also how easy it is for you to build muscle, uh, where you distribute your fat distribution on your body. Like for example, for myself, I hold a lot of fat on my lower back, which is good. I would rather it be there than on my abs, for example, but people hold fat in different places and that's typically determined by your genetics. Also your baseline kind of like leanness, how lean you can get, how you'll na naturally, if you were to just eat at maintenance calories all the time, how lean would you stay year round? That's also determined by genetics as well, right? So there's many factors that go into genetics, but it's not something we can change. It's not something we have control over. You got given your genetics by your parents and your grandparents, etc. We can't change it, so there's no point even really focus on it, but just understand that anyone that you see online who has got a top 1% physique, they also have pretty good genetics too. That's the next thing. Third thing is PEDs. Gotta talk about this. You know, there's some people online that are open about it, and if they're open about it, then great, you know about it. There's other people online who aren't open about it, okay? And some people will lie about it. But just understand that if you're natural and you're comparing yourself to someone who is potentially enhanced, that's not a fair comparison, okay? And so what? So what if there's people online taking PEDs? This is not about them. This is about you. If you want to do that, then cool. That's a personal decision. That's something that you've got to decide. But maybe it wouldn't be a good time to do it as a beginner maybe wait until you've got five years of training or longer under your belt and then decide if you want to do that thing but anyway regardless of what i'm going to say some of you are going to do it some of you are not going to do it just don't compare yourself to someone who is enhanced if you're natural because it's not a fair comparison all right that's the next thing also is this one you're really not going to like okay <laughs> this is a bit of tough love is actions chances are they train better than you do. Chances are their lifestyle is better than you. Chances are their diet's better than you. It's very easy to point the finger and say, oh yeah, it's genetics. Oh yeah, it's PEDs. Oh yeah, they've been training for a very long time. But what if simply they're just better at the game than you are? What if they know how to train harder than you? What if they know how to lift better than you? What if they know how to eat better than you? They're probably doing a lot of things that you're not doing outside of the PDs and the genetics and everything like that, okay? So just think, where can I improve? Maybe my training needs to get better. Maybe my nutrition needs to get better. 
maybe I need to hire a coach because a lot of these guys are the top of their game. They will have had a coach at some point, if if not having a coach right now. Okay. So by the way, if you want coaching, uh, the links are down below. Okay, so that's something to consider as well. And the last thing with regards to this is the art and science of taking photos and videos to look good, okay? Because there is literally a skill involved when it comes to taking photos. Specifically with photos, right? If you see an Instagram post get posted and you were to reverse engineer that and to go back and start from the beginning, that person may have taken 20 to 30 photos, okay? Each with a different pose, different angle, catching the lighting differently. And all of these things can make a massive difference. Also, they will have probably done it just after training. So when you've got a pump, you look completely different to when you're just normal, right? So they go and get a pump and then they play around with the angles, catch the light in the right way. And it can make a huge difference to how you look. And out of all those photos, they pick the best one. And then um, on top of that, then these photos are edited, okay? So if you are comparing yourself to someone who's online, who's been training for longer than you, who's potentially taking PDs, who's potentially knows the game better than you, they know how to train harder, train better, eat better, whatever. And on top of that, they're taking loads of photos, selecting the best one, and then editing that photo. No wonder, okay? So don't compare yourself to anyone else online. Fitness is a game of you versus you. That's it. It's not a game of me versus me. Regardless of how jacked I get, it does not affect your ability to get jacked, right? Okay, it's not a competition. We're not in a competition with each other. This is you versus you. So don't focus, don't compare yourself to other people online because it's it's robbing your happiness it's robbing your enjoyment by all means go online and take inspiration get inspired when you see good physiques but don't compare yourself to others because fitness is a game of you versus you and every day if you just focus on trying to be better than the person you were yesterday and you keep doing this you do this every week every month every year you will eventually get to a point where you're happy with. You will eventually build a physique that you're proud of, okay? So hope this video helps. Hope this clears something up and go out there, get as jacked as you possibly can and I'll see you in the next one.